that one is just totally jacked. Go figure, it didn't melt the terminal, it melted the post on the battery. And it did this while running. Well, I guess today it's Wilbur for the win. Wilbur is broke down right here in the middle of the road with a load on and won't start right now anyway because I melted the battery cables in half. That one is just totally jacked. Go figure, it didn't melt the terminal, it melted the post on the battery. And it did this while running. Or at least best I can tell. I can't get it to start now. It, it can't get a connection across there. It's sitting there just wanting to arc and melt it worse. But what happened was I was driving and got right to this point and I started noticing what looked like smoke coming out from the radiator or off the front of the truck. First I thought it was dust, then I thought maybe it was just, you know, steam out of the radiator like I was overheating or something. So I stopped and as soon as I stopped, smoke, actual smoke, started coming out of the dash of the truck. Let me see if I can step around here to the other side. <clears throat> And it smelled like burning electrical, like burning insulation on wires. So I freaked out, of course, and had to jump out to kill the engine because I don't have a kill switch in the truck. So I had to jump out and sh hit the, uh, the manual on the injector pump. And when I got back in, I noticed this puddle on the floor. I think it's oil, motor oil. It doesn't really have a prominent smell to it, like hydraulic oil or or transmission. At first I thought it was scorched wires, but then I noticed it's it's wet. But it doesn't really have a smell. Um and it just it just happened when I jumped out to shut the truck off because I don't that's where my foot was at and I don't have anything on my shoe. Smoke was coming out of these little holes here. Um but as soon as I stopped the truck that stopped. Like I jumped out, shut the truck off and that stopped. Um or turn the key off and that stopped. So what I don't know now is I'm trying to make a connection as to what even is run in this dash. Look at that. As soon as I turned the key on it, wanted to pop that post again. Um, even without me trying to start the truck. Gosh darn it. Man, it's always something. There, there's so much. This whole rat's nest of wires. There's so much stuff on this truck that just doesn't work, doesn't matter. God knows if it's even hooked up. And that's what will cause little issues like this. Something shorted out. You know, burned something off. This piece here. I mean, that looks like it should be hooked to something. It's a, it's a flare and a flange. But see, that's not wet. At first I thought maybe that was an oil line or something that blew off. But that's not wet at all. That's been dangling for some time, I guess. And I just don't know. I really have no idea. If I try... Yeah, see, I'm, I'm totally dead on the batteries now. Not to say the batteries are dead, but that connection's totally fried, so... Oh my god. At a minimum, we're talking new cables and a new battery. Um, and then I gotta figure out why it's broke. And until then, I can't start the truck. And it's sitting right in the middle of my road with a load of dirt on. Which means if we get a rain, I've got a massive load of mud in the back of the truck. I might bring the excavator around here actually and pull a bunch of it out. Probably wouldn't hurt to do that. Might even be able to lift the bed with the excavator. I don't know. That's kind of scary, but I suppose I could try. Shovel the dirt out and then pick up on the bed with the excavator. Try to get up to get the rest of it out. Anyway, that's not here nor there. I guess I'll do some investigating and some parts replacing and see what I can figure out. Okay, I just pulled the dash open on Wilbur here, and I just wanted to give you guys kind of a first look at it before I tear anything up. Obviously, first thing big mud dauber nests not that it doesn't really affect anything um but it definitely looks like it was somehow my 
starter switch. That's the back of the starter switch there that, that failed. Um, this cable coming in here, this brown cable, you can see the insulation's all melted off of it. I can't tell if that's something that just happened or if that was always like that. Looking at where that cable goes. It is the on my amperage gauge. So that could have also been a malfunction. I'm not sure that it's in communication with the starter switch, actually. Um, but see, I'm seeing that. I mentioned that uh, it looked like oil or something was dripping out, and I don't think it was actually oil. I thought maybe I had like melted a hole in a line for an oil pressure sensor, but what I think it is, I think it was just this this sort of insulation off this wire here, this coating, whatever that is. I think that's what it was that melted and dripped off there. That or it's some sort of oil from inside the, it could have been something inside the starter switch. I'm not entirely familiar with what the innards are on them, but the whole back of my starter switch has, is wet like that. So there may be you know some electrical grease or something that's, that's inside that switch that it got so hot that it melted and dripped out. Very good chance. So I'm gonna try to flip this thing around here. I'm gonna need two hands. Um, see if I can get that starter switch taken out of there and then get things cleaned up a little bit to where I can get a little better look and inspect the other wires and try to figure out just what is a problem and what may or may not have gone wrong here. Well, I thought I'd take the steering wheel off to give myself a little room to work, but this, uh, Eroded metal is what's left of maybe a castle nut <laughs> that was on there. So shy of a cutting torch or unbolting and unhooking a bunch of stuff down here, I don't see that the steering wheel is just gonna come right off like I was hoping. So never mind on that. I'll just have to try to work behind as best I can. Okay, so I'm chasing a couple things here. The starter switch definitely got hot. I think I already mentioned that. That's where what in the hell? got a mud dauber in here somewhere. I can hear him buzzing, but I can't see him. Sorry. Anyway, the starter switch definitely got hot. That's where that oil came from. It must have been a grease or something inside that dripped out. So that's good. There's not a leaking oil line in here. So that's got to be replaced. Uh, and then I'm trying to chase where all the wires are going to off of it. This yellow wire down here at the bottom. Looks like it goes over, no, I'm sorry. This this red wire, oh, come on, focus. This red wire with this sort of long body fuse link in it, that goes over to the hour meter, which has never worked, so I don't really care about that. Um, this black wire here with a blade fuse link goes up and I think it's just a power out to a few other things that brings power up here to I don't know an old I think that's an old push button start or something it's not the horn the horn down here it brings power up to that switch which I have no idea what it does so I'm not really worried about that uh, this brown wire here brings power to this switch whatever it does so again not worried about that. So probably the yellow wire down at the bottom, or sorry, again, red wire and this black wire here, these can both come off and just be left off, I think, because they go to something that I've never ever used that probably doesn't work. This bigger black wire right here that my thumb is on, you guys can keep up with everything here, it runs over and hooks into the back of if you guys can see what I can see. It hooks into the back of my um, amp meter, or my alternator gauge. And there's a whole bunch of other wires that hook in there. Um, so I'm trying to figure out if that's, I would think that's gotta be power out through the switch. So this the switch is just a start switch, right? There's gonna be, um, Sorry, I'm kind of thinking and shooting here at the same time. There should be a relay somewhere else. This sends power to a relay that then engages the starter. And that relay may be on the starter itself, actually. It probably is. Um, 
So, what, what concerns me, before I forget, I'll show you this. What concerns me is this brown wire in here that the insulation's all melted off of. And that's something new because that copper is fresh and clean. That's not, um, uh, I'm talking about this one right here. You know, if, they, if it had been an old, an old wound, so to speak, that copper would be corroded looking, but it's fresh and clean. So these two big brown wires, those also come off that um, alternator gauge. So those will have to be replaced. I gotta figure out where they go because even if my alternator gauge isn't working, um, I need to make sure that my circuit is correct so that when the, when the key is on and the switch is in the run position, I need to make sure that uh, the alternator is actually getting, is actually charged and doing its job. I'm actually kind of wondering if these wires aren't what failed first somehow and then kind of backfed the power switch or vice versa. It could be just that the start switch failed and just let current run rampant to these and that's why they're all melted down. That's more likely um, that that's what went wrong. Anyway, I've got to figure out how to replace those. So I've got a couple things in here that I can take off and leave off. Like I said, these couple little fuse links that go to nothing else important. Those are going to come off. Um, these, yeah, these. These are going to come off and stay off. Um, to try to simplify this switch. And I've just got to figure out the wires going to my alternator switch now, or to my to my amp meter, like I said. I gotta figure those out, or voltmeter, whatever you wanna call it. Um, I gotta figure those out and make sure that I disconnect and replace exactly what needs to be done. But we're getting started on anyway. I've gotta go grab some tools because right now the batteries are actually technically still hooked up, though they're not feeding any juice because that pole melted. Um, but they could at any minute somehow move and make a current, so I need to get them disconnected and then I'll get to taking these wires apart. Okay, so now we're on the engine side of things and still trying to figure out the exact flow path of all the electricity. Can't figure out where the wires for the alternator are coming involved here, um, but I'm thinking they must be looped back through the starter switch. Anyway, what we've got, this is a 24 volt system uh, so you've got two 12, big 12-volt 12 batteries in series. Here's our positive feed out. Our negative there connects back to the terminal. This is a new battery I just had to buy. Um, so it's not hooked up. But the negative just connects back to the frame. So our positive out is feeding power out through this cable, which runs underneath my feet and twists around the back and comes up in here to the back of our main power switch in the cab. So my key switch in the cab uh, it's just a basic Caterpillar key, just one click, turns that switch on. So that has, why my camera won't focus, I don't know. Focus, you piece of dog crap. There we go, now it decides to focus when it wants to. Okay, so we're feeding power up right here from the positive on the battery. Turn the switch on, it activates these two wires. This big sucker feeds power down to the starter. This little guy, that's our brown wire that's inside the dash that's all melted. You can see it's even melted there already too. Uh, it's melted the whole length of it. So this little wire carries power to our starter switch. So it loops back down. It ties in with a few others here, but it goes inside this big, I guess you'd call it a conduit. I don't really know what the hell it is. But it goes inside there. You can see little spots along here. It's melted out right there. Um, so that goes back up into the dash. Oh, we can actually chase it. We can actually see it's, it's right up here, wiggling. Um, so that takes power back up into the dash. For some reason, it piggybacks through the alternator gauge before it gets to the starter switch. But then as I showed you in the cab, that brown wire goes through the alternator switch, or through the alternator gauge. Um, and then over to the starter switch. Now the starter switch is just a, it's got a, two spring-loaded functions. You go to the left, it's your glow plugs. You go to the right, it um, goes to your starter. So to the left, so I was chasing, trying to figure out wires again. Here we find on our glow plug relay, well there's not really a relay actually, there is no relay from what I can see, there's just the switch, because it's just spring-loaded. But we've got a solid yellow wire right there and that's feeding up to our glow plugs. So that's probably the yellow wire that was on the back of our starter switch, which leaves just the white and red wire as the unknown. 
and that that white and red wire becomes this black wire somewhere. Um, so this sends power when I when I turn that button to engage the start switch, that now sends power to this starter relay, which closes the relay to let it arc power from this main on the, the, the positive on the battery to engage the starter and then it grounds down here. So you can see a big cable coming off the bottom and it just loops over and grounds out to the frame. So this little white wire is just to ground between the relay and the starter itself. So we've traced our wires now and I think all I'm gonna have to replace is this, what I'm calling the big brown wire again, the big brown wire here. Um, I'm just gonna replace it all the way through from that master switch all the way up into the dash. I'm just gonna run a new wire. Um, I gotta go look under the dash one more time and try to see because I thought there was two brown wires. So I've gotta figure out where they're both going, but one of them is definitely here and it's power to that alternator gauge. Um, the other one is perhaps, I mean, it should go down to the alternator itself at some point. I've got a wire down here that looks like another big brown here to the, not the black one I'm tugging on, but that one over there. That's another big brown, but it goes into that wiring harness there and kind of loops around and it's this harness here. And I can't really figure out where it goes from there. I can see it here. Um, I think that's that same big brown. And then it's going, oh, it's in this wire, assuming Assuming it doesn't break out somewhere there behind that beam, then it's in this big wiring harness here, um, which I'm going to have to cut this open and see what's going on at this junction. Uh, I don't, that could be the brown wire path going all the way to the cab there, but I think personally it's going up through here uh, on this whole conduit. So. Anyway, let me go back in the cab now. I figured out what's going on under the hood, I believe. The only thing I haven't isolated yet is how we're communicating with the alternator. But I've got the starter switch figured out. Yeah, it's it's really hot. I'm having to put my gloves down on the metal just for something to kneel on uh, and only touch plastic because all of this metal, like it, it seriously is burning me. Um, okay. So back in the cab, let's take a look back at our brown wire and try to figure it out. All right, so we are in the belly of the beast right now. That's the inside of my front fender well. Back of the alternator. So you can see there's only one wire, at least that I can see, coming off the alternator. It's this brown one here. And this scares me a little bit because this brown wire is also melted. So now, it makes me wonder if the alternator malfunctioned and started putting out too much juice, thereby starting to melt this wire and, um, you know, sending too much power back through the alternator gauge and the start switch. I'm just trying to think if the start switch malfunctioned, how that would have made this wire get overheated, how that could have affected the alternator. I need to go do a little research. But anyway, so I was chasing that wire because I've got two brown wires off the back of that amperage switch in the cab, uh, or the amperage gauge, sorry. There's two brown wires coming off of it and one single brown wire coming into it. And I'm trying to figure out which one is which. This one, okay, so I don't remember what all I said, but Tracing this brown wire from the alternator, it's melted. It comes back together here and everything comes into this, this kind of, I guess you call it a wiring harness. Um, the brown wire does, our black wire feeding the starter solenoid does. Um, this other black wire here, which is connected to nothing feeds into it uh, and actually 
don't know if I can get the camera down here and show you guys. I, I'm, I'm literally like I'm stuck. Uh, my wife just came and talked to my feet because that's all she could see. Okay, so this is in that same wiring harness here, this exposed spot. Let me show you what I got here, what I found. Anyway, this helps me confirm things. Come on, there. White with red. White with red was what was on the back of the starter switch in the cab. So it's right here in this wiring harness. And then a couple inches away from that, you've got some boogery splicing. So that's where white with red switches over to black. Uh, also the same wiring harness has our yellow wire right there coming out of it. That yellow wire is what feeds up to uh, the glow plugs. Not, not this big yellow wire, that's our positive to the starter. The little yellow wire, that one, that little yellow wire. So that's all part of a wiring harness or a cable, if you will. It's a bunch of single wires with a out of rubber sheathing. Probably a factory install just by the looks of it. And I'm gonna just replace, I think, all of it. So the only mystery still is of the two brown wires on the back of the amp meter switch, which is which, because they both go into a sleeve and I can't figure out, and they've probably melted a bunch of stuff inside the sleeve with them. So I'm just gonna replace it all and I'm gonna to do a little testing as I put things back together to figure out uh, which is which. But if I can get it at least started again, um, which is going to be, I can just have this wire disconnected from the alternator uh, to get the truck started and sitting there running. Once it's started, it won't draw any juice from the batteries. And then we can test where, oh, excuse me, we can test where the power needs to go to figure out which wire needs to be which as far as running uh, juice from the alternator and running juice back over to the amp meter switch. So. A little bit of trial and error, but for right now I'm going to end up, I'm going to go ahead and take the rest of the switches apart. I'm not going to cut out these old wires yet. I'm going to replace them first and then remove them as I cut them out. Um, so yeah, for now I just need to get those two switches out, that amp meter gauge and the start switch. And I need to get to town and try to get new ones. Okay, so had to call in the big guns one of the big guns, one of my brothers that's an electrical engineer, he has a console on Wilbur here. I gotta keep the camera just on my face because my wife doesn't like you guys show. It's good to see my hot bod here, uh, which is, I'm trying to do that without looking up my nose either. Okay, so anyway, um, oh, there's a storm blowing in. So here's the deal on Wilbur. Basically, we've traced everything back and the the power from the generator and this would make sense the power from we're going to call it a generator not an alternator it's an old old diesel engine probably a generator the power from the generator is running back through that amp gauge in the dash which makes sense okay it's not a voltmeter it's an amp gauge because a voltmeter would simply if your batteries are charged your voltmeter would just say yeah got 12 volts right or 24 volts the amp meter shows that you have amperage actually flowing from the generator back to the batteries. That wire from the generator back to the batteries, or from, from the generator back to the amp meter, and then through the amp meter back to the master switch on the positive side, that whole wire is roasted. And that's primarily the only wire that's roasted. Now there was some collateral damage around it, the starter switch, um, the, the push button switch, that's the one that got, it got hot, it melted, the, probably the dielectric grease that was inside of it is what leaked out, that's the oil on the floor. I'm going to go ahead and replace that switch, just assuming that if it got so hot that it melted the grease, it's probably messed up inside. Plus, when I tried to restart the truck the first time, I let off that spring-loaded switch, it snapped back to neutral and the starter kept cranking. So we're going to replace that spring-loaded switch. We are going to rewire directly from the generator back to the positive side of the master switch. Now that's going to take the amp meter out of the equation. I'm not going to know whether my generator is working or not, but for now, for a quick fix to try to isolate issues on this truck and not to try to have any more rat nested wires in that dash, we're just going to take it out of the equation. I can always splice another amp meter in sometime in the future if that's what I decide. So now, I'm going to get cleaned up. 
We're gonna go to town. I'm gonna go to Napa. I'm gonna see if they can even find this switch. It looks like it's got a Caterpillar number on it. Um, when I tell them it's a DJB truck, they're gonna roll their eyes and ask me what I just said because they've never heard of it. But gonna, <laughs> we're gonna try to find a replacement for this starter switch. We're gonna get some replacement wire, some fittings, um, everything that we that we think we need to, for now, get the start switch wired back up, get the batteries wired back up, and try to get the truck rolling again. From there, we'll go about wiring up an amp meter later on if we decide we want to. But I want to get the truck rolling again. It's wanting to storm, but this is going to be just afternoon thunderstorm. It's it's not going to, you know, it just makes it humid. Um, but I really need to get Wilbur rolling again. I really need to haul dirt. It's dry. It's supposed to stay dry. I've got to take advantage. So to town, looking for parts. Again, we'll let you know how it goes.